Yes, I feel like traveling, traveling on. I feel like traveling, traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Its glittering towers of sun outshine. I feel like traveling on That heavenly mansion shall be mine I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling, traveling on I feel like traveling, traveling on
and it is joy unspeakable and full of glory full of glory full of glory it is joy unspeakable and full of glory for the have has never yet been told i have good news to bring and that is why i sing all my joys with you i'll share i plan to take a trip in the good old gospel ship and go sailing through the air oh i'm gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship i'm going far beyond the shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye oh I can scarcely wait I don't want to be late for I'll spend my time in prayer and when my ship comes in I'll leave this world of sin and go sailing through Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye. If you're ashamed of me, you have no cause to be. For with Christ I am an heir. If too much fault you find, you should be left behind. While I go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing. Until the heavens ring While I'm bidding this world goodbye Oh, I can scarcely wait I know I'll not be late For I spend my time in prayer And when my ship comes in I'll leave this world of sin And go sailing through take a trip in the good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky oh I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye That he does for me, I know I'm unworthy of him all, but his blessings he freely gives. I owe my life to him. I've got so much to thank him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. But you see, He's been so good to me. When I think of what He's done and where He brought me from, I've got so much to Sometimes, while all this way I kneel, I stop and say thank you for all you've done for me. One day I'll reach sweet heaven's shore, oh please, let
let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank Him for. And I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. Well, you see, He's been so good to me. When I think of what He's done and where He brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him for. I'm thankful that the Lord, He knows what we need and He always helps us with our needs. And I just want to praise Him and thank Him for who He is. He is a great and mighty Savior. I'm so thankful. One Friday morning in Jerusalem The weight of my sins were All cast upon Him Freely He bore them Taking my shame Proving He loves me Bless His holy name one Sunday morning at the breaking of day Mary and Martha found the stone rolled away death had no power over God's son hallelujah he's risen the battle's been won. Hallelujah, he's risen. Mary has seen him. He's alive and walking on Galilee shore. Hallelujah, he's risen. Thomas has touched him. He's risen to live forevermore. Hallelujah, He's risen. Mary has seen Him. He's alive and walking on Galilee's shore. Hallelujah, He's risen. Wonderful to hear, bringing hope and cheer. It's the lovely name of Jesus, evermore the same. What a lovely name! Oh, Reaching higher far than the broadest star. Oh, it's sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely name through his name. There's wondrous power, power to redeem. He's making sinners clean. By His power, He cleansed 
Christ a leper, open blinded eyes. He caused the dead to rise. Oh, what a lovely name, the name of Jesus, reaching higher far than the brightest star. Oh, it's sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely name. He'll return on clouds of glory, saints of every race. Shall behold his face, and with him enter heaven's city, ever to acclaim. What a lovely name! Oh, what a lovely name! The name of Jesus. Reaching higher far than the brightest star. Oh, it's sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely name through his name. There's wondrous power, power to redeem. He's making sinners clean. By His power, He cleansed a leper, opened blinded eyes. He caused the dead to rise. Oh, what a lovely name, the name of Jesus, reaching higher far than the brightest star. Oh, it's sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim. What a lovely name. There's a light in the window, the table spread in splendor, and someone standing by the old pond door. I can't see a crystal river. Lord, I must be there forever. Oh, I've never been this home sick before. See the bright light shine. It's just about home time. Oh, I can see the Father standing at the door. This world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Oh, Lord, I've never been this home sick before. But I can see the family gathering, sweet faces, all familiar. There's no one old or feeble. Anymore. Oh, my lonesome hearts are crying. I think I'll spread my wings and fly. Lord, I've never been this home sick before. See the bright light shine. It's just about home time. Oh, 
I can see my father standing at the door. This whole world has been a wilderness that I'm ready for to live around. Oh, Lord, I've never been this home sick before. Oh, Lord, I've never been this home sick before. Amen. Are you homesick tonight? Amen. A place that I've never been. Amen. But I'm homesick to go. Amen. Appreciate the Lord. Appreciate uh, all that He's done for me. Has He done you anything good, church? Amen. I appreciate Him. I was praying yesterday evening and the thought come to my mind. The situation you're in has not caught God by surprise. Amen. What you're going through, it may have caught you by surprise. But it didn't catch God by surprise. God knew it even before you thought about it. God knew what was coming your way before you even had any inclination in your mind that it was coming. He already knew. And you know the good thing about it? He was already there. He was already there. Amen. That gives me comfort to know He was waiting on me to start that trial. Amen. Appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. I, I want you to go with me if you got your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 2. We'll try not to keep you too long, if it be the Lord's will. Amen. Amen. We uh, apologize we didn't get to stay for the dinner last Sunday, but felt led to go to another church as well. But what I did eat was good. And uh, Brooke come packing two plates out there and a bowl of dumplings, so... Uh, we eat going up the road, and it was good. And I didn't get none on me, so thank God for that. And man, I'm, I've got a catch-all right here. When I go to eat, I catch it all right there. Amen. So uh, uh, it, was, it was good food, but most of all, it was good spiritual food. Brother Will preached some good messages that week, the nights that I got to be here. Amen. The thought that come to my mind as I was... Uh, laying in bed this morning about 2 o'clock. Uh, you think I'm crazy? You ain't seen nothing yet. Man, people think we're crazy, church, because of the way we believe, the way we live our life, the way that we come to church. You know, people, they just can't wrap their mind around it. Why in the world would you go to church during the middle of a pandemic? Why wouldn't you go to church? It's what the question I'd like to ask. Amen. But I believe that we're coming out of this thing. I believe that we're coming out. Amen. And the church is going to be stronger than before. Amen. You see the, 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 the church world has come under attack. I don't know. Some of you may have seen it about the big church out in California. They're getting fined every time they open the door, $5,000. Amen. Because they're assembling. Amen. The church is under attack. But can I tell you something? The church has been under attack since Jesus walked on the face of the earth. Amen. We need your prayers tonight. Amen. But I believe we're coming out of this thing. And I believe all the signs are pointing to His coming. We see we see the, uh, the falling away. We see that, uh, how the heart of many has waxed cold. We see this, amen. We see that, uh, listen, I, and, and, and not to beat nobody up, but it's a time we run to the house of God. Amen. If you was cut severely and bleeding and could not stop the bleeding, no doubt this pandemic going on, you would no doubt probably run to the ER. Amen. Because you needed some help. Amen. I want you to know in this time that we're living in, we need to run to God because He's our only help. Amen. He's our only hope. And Jesus said in this life you'll have tribulation, but He said be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Aren't you glad of that tonight? 
Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. But I believe the church is going to come out of this thing triumphant. Amen. And we see the love of many that's waxed cold and we see the falling away and we see the empty church pews. And you go by the churches, you see they're, <coughs> they're not having service anymore. We see all of those things. But yet there's a promise that the Lord give us in the scripture that we've not seen yet. Amen. And we're getting ready to read about it. We're getting ready to read about it. And I believe that there's getting ready to be an outpouring like we've never seen. Amen. And me and I, my Uncle John was talking there last Sunday and uh, the, the dream, uh, and I believe me and Lou was talking about it as well, the dream that Mama had before she passed away, that all of her children would be saved. Amen, and the signs are pointing to His coming. Listen, the armies are compassing around about Israel. Amen, we, we see all this, the, the, the things that the Bible spoke about. We see this happening before our very eyes. We see the earthquakes in diverse places. We see the pestilence, the quick spreading diseases. How soon was this disease, amen, before it swept the world? We see these things happening, but yet... There's one more, and I believe that the church, amen, is going to come out of this thing strong. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 14, if you want to stand for the reading of God's word, you can. If you're not able, I'd totally understand. Acts 2 and 14, listen, Peter, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is, it is but the third hour of the day. But listen what he said. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. You can be seated tonight. If you go back and you begin to read and study in the book of Joel, you see in chapter 1 how Joel, the, this prophet, amen, was Sending a warning, amen, the locusts came, a swarm of locusts. Listen, the swarm of locusts was so thick that it overshadowed the sun, amen. That's why the sun, sun did not shine forth its light, amen. The fields were burnt, amen. The desolation had taken place, amen. And the call went before the land and all Judea to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And whosoever would call upon that name of the Lord, they shall be saved, the Bible said. Joel was telling them, amen, make ready. Amen. Paul wrote, he said, I beseech you. Amen. What does the word beseech mean? It means to implore urgently, to make earnest appeal, to beg with eagerness. Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Uh, that you present your body that living sacrifice. You see, Joel, a man, a prophet of the, of the Old Testament, uh, I want you to understand one thing. The Holy Ghost had came now, amen, and they, they begin, you see, when Jesus walked with them on the earth and he was teaching them the Old Testament, but they did not comprehend. They, they, they could not comprehend what Jesus was to teach them. Amen. But you see, he said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but that the law through me might be fulfilled. Amen. Jesus was trying to show them that it's, uh, it's so easy that a child could understand it. 
Amen. But you see here now that the Holy Ghost has fallen, has fallen upon them. Amen. They have the understanding that they need. Amen. And Peter realizes, amen, what the prophet Joel was talking about in the Old Testament. Amen. You see today, church, the time that we're living in, there's darkness covering the earth. Hello, somebody. Darkness has covered the earth. No, it may not be a swarm of locusts. No, it may not be the palmer worm or the canker worm. No, though it may not be those, amen, those things that have come, amen, and covered us up and swarmed us, but there's a darkness upon this land. Amen. But can I tell you something tonight? Amen. That God has made a way of escape. I said it the other night during the homecoming services. Amen. God always made a way of escape for His people. Amen. Somebody. Hallelujah. When Moses stood before Pharaoh and he said, Let my people go. Amen. And Pharaoh would not let him go. And honey, I want you to know the plagues came. Amen. The frogs, the locusts, amen. The fly. Let me tell you something. They all the plagues came. But Pharaoh's son fell dead. Can I tell you something? Amen. Pharaoh, he let his people go. God had a plan. I want you to know God has got a plan. He is going to get your loved one's attention. Hello, somebody. He is going to get the attention of your loved ones, those that you've been praying for for so long. Hey Amen. God's got a plan. And you see, Pharaoh let the God's people go and they were fleeing. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Pharaoh, he realized, he said, what have I done? I've let, I've let my workers go. I've let my slaves go. Hey Amen. He commanded his army to chase after them. Hey Amen. To go and to bring them back into bondage. Can I tell you something? Hey Amen. If God brings you to the situation that you're in, God's got a way to get you through that situation. Can I get a little carnal with you just a moment? When a police officer says, Hands up. Do you know what that is? That's a sign of surrender. Huh? When you put your hands up, you're showing that officer you mean him no harm. I don't come to you. I'm not coming. Hey Amen. This ain't going where you think it's going. Huh? I know, I know we're living in trouble sometimes. But you see the situation that you're in, you need to throw your hands up. Lord, I surrender all. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cause you no more heartache. I'm not. No, I'm not gonna cause you no more difficulty. God, I put it in your hands. Amen. Lord, I surrender to you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. I surrender it to you, Lord. Amen. You see the uh, before. Amen. Amen. That the uh, children of Israel had made it across the Red Sea. They had come to this great body of water. Huh. They had come to this, this and they, they, they could not see the other side of this great river. Hey Amen. And if they could, it was in a far off distance. They could not visualize. They didn't have a boat. And if they did have a boat, how was they all going to get across? Hello? But you see, they began to murmur and complain. And said, Moses, why have you brought us out here? Why have you brought us to this place? At least back there when we was in bondage, we had food to eat. We had a place to lay our head. You see, that's where the enemy wants you at tonight. He wants you comfortable in the misery that you're in. But you see, I'm not comfortable in the misery I'm in. Hello? Am I at the right place tonight? Anybody going through anything, just wave at me. Hey, man, I, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you what it is. Hey, man. That's, that's between you and the Lord and you and your family. Amen. You and your loved ones. Amen. The enemy would have you to murmur and complain. I, I, I don't want I don't want to leave the state that I'm in. Oh God, come on, somebody. I don't want to leave the place that I'm at. I don't want I'm comfortable right here where I'm at. I'm comfortable right now in the mess that I'm in. God, I don't want change. Amen. You see, that's what's wrong with the church. They don't want change anymore. They're happy with their routine. God bless their four no more. Amen. If anybody else comes, that's all right. But God just bless my four. Let me tell you something tonight, church. Change is what it's going to take. It's going to take us getting out of traditions of men. Amen. And coming to the place. Amen. Where we can say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Huh? 
You know, sometimes the battle that you're going in, instead of praying your way out of it, you need to praise your way out of it. Hello? There's a song that says, I raise a hallelujah. Uh, my weapon is a melody. Hello, somebody. Huh? My weapon is a melody. Huh? Jehoshaphat. Amen. When the, when the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him and he, amen, he said a fast. Everybody had to fast, amen. The armies was compassed around about him, amen. And, and the Lord moved upon Jehoshaphat and he said, everybody's going to fast. Amen, the women's going to fast. The children's going to fast. Amen, the cattle, the, amen, the livestock, they're going to fast. Can I tell you something tonight, church? Amen, we need to come to the place where we can hear from God and say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it with your help. But after the fast... You know what the Lord told Jehoshaphat? He said, you put out the praise team in the front. Hello, somebody. Huh? Oh, I feel this tonight, church. Some of you just looking at me, but that's okay. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody specifically here tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've not fought the pits of hell to come and just... Play patty cake with Jesus. Amen. God is in the house to move specifically for your need. Hello. Oh, God. You see, after this fast, no doubt the people probably would have wanted the best soldiers out front, but that ain't what that ain't what the Lord told Jehoshaphat. He said, you put out the praise team. You put out the singers in the front. Hey Amen. Can I tell you something, church? If Jehoshaphat did not put out the singers in the front of the army, can I tell you, the army would have been overtaken by the enemy that was around him. But because of Jehoshaphat's obedience, he put the singers out in the front. Hey Amen. You need to pray Praise your way out of this situation because in the last day, saith God, He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. I shared this with the church we went to. Amen. When we left here last Sunday, you say, Preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. I ain't got nothing to praise God for. Honey, you praise God for who He is. You don't have to have nothing to praise God for. You praise Him for who He is. Huh? Revelation chapter 4, I believe it's verse 8, teaches us that there's four beasts around the throne. Amen. And, and they cease not day or night to holler holy. Hallelujah, Mohammed. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Can I tell you something tonight, church? Amen. If you're going to get out of the mess you're in, amen, you say, I, preacher, you don't understand. I've prayed and I've prayed. Well, praise your way out of it. Claim the victory. Amen. Josh Bowman sings a song. says, when the enemy's all around you, just walk on. Huh? Hallelujah. The Bible said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hello, somebody. Am I, am I giving you the word tonight, church? Huh? Did you see the, the children of Israel were at this great Red Sea? Huh? Moses, why have you brought me out here to die? I had a place to lay my head. I was happy where I was at. Yes, I was a slave, but I was comfortable. Huh? I can think of a man named Naaman. Amen? Hallelujah. Naaman came unto the prophet of God expecting the prophet of God to come out amen and to say he's got some great swelling word but can I tell you the prophet sent out his servant and said Naaman amen to be cleansed you've got to go to muddy Jordan and dip seven times amen can I tell you Naaman was wrong Naaman was mad if you will Naaman was upset because it didn't go the way he wanted it to this thing ain't going the way you wanted it. Huh? The situation you're in, it ain't going the way you thought it should. Hello. Huh? Amen. I don't know if you've ever experienced this or not, but there's been times, amen, that the Lord has used us in the gift of prophecy or to give somebody an encouraging word. Amen. And you can look at their face 
Amen. And in their mind, they're ready to slap you silly because it ain't what they wanted to hear. Huh? The Bible don't say it, but I believe Naaman was that mad. Hey Amen. He was so mad. He said in himself, haunt the rivers in Damascus much more cleaner than that of muddy Jordan. You see, Jordan was an unclean river. Jordan was a, a trashy river. Amen. I want you to know Jim probably remembers it. Amen. They might still do it. They used to say not to baptize in the Powell River because it was dirty because up in St. Charles and Stone Creek, different places up on up the road, their, their septics used to run into the creek. They, they, they advised that we would not get in the water and baptize people. Huh? But we did anyhow. Huh? Jordan was that kind of river. It was niceness. There was no life in this river. It was full of trash, full of garbage. Amen. Hallelujah. It was a muddy river. I don't know if you've ever tried to fish in the mud, in the when the water's muddy, but you don't do too good as you do when the water's clear. Huh? The fish can't see the bait. Hello. You've got to use a, a, a bait that'll make some noise so they can feel that vibration in the water and go to it. And, and listen, they hit it blind. They don't know what it is, but they, they just know their instinct is to grab hold of that thing. Uh, but don't name Amen. Pride about got in the way. And Naaman almost died a leper. And I want you to know something. Had he not been obedient to the voice of the Lord, he would have died a leper. Would he not, Brother Jim? He had to be obedient. Huh? How the little servant, he told Naaman, he said, how much easier it would it be just to go and dip and be cleansed? Huh? Church, how much easier would it be just to let go and let God bring you through this thing? Hello? Ah, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. Every time I turn around, Every time I turn around, everything I touch, it seems like it crumbles. Amen. And I'm, what I'm about to share with you tonight is not out of pity, but it's to show you what God can do. I've been out of work for two months now. Huh? I've lost right at $4,500 of income in those two months. I'm not bragging on what I made. I thank God for my job. I've had to quit my job. Amen. I'm not asking for pity, not asking for sorrow, not asking for your money. Amen. But I've had to rely on God. Hello? You see, we had a bill come due the other day, $675 our car insurance was due. I said, Lord, I don't know how. We've got a little bit of money put back, but Lord, that'll wipe our savings out and we won't have nothing, Lord. Can I tell you, a sinner man, Called me on the telephone. My boss. And he said, you've got three paychecks over here. I don't know why you ain't come and picked them up. I hadn't been working. I said, I shouldn't have no more paychecks over here. He said, oh, yeah. He said, I paid you through the end of the month. Huh? But you see, every day I told the Lord, Lord, I don't know how. But I know you're going to. Huh? God, I don't, I don't see how. In the natural, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. But in the Spirit, I know that you're going to do it. Amen. Huh? You see, I've heard people say, hey Amen, the, the church is shut up. They don't want to help the people in need anymore. If that's the case, God, I move on the sinner, man. Amen. Hello, somebody. Hello. Hallelujah. I've heard Jim tell the story years gone by in his messages, the, the times that the woman was praying on her porch, Lord, you know I need the groceries. Lord, you know my cabinets are empty. You know my refrigerator is empty, Lord. And I may not can tell it like he can, but I believe it was two old drunks heard what the woman was a praying Hey Amen. And they, they said to themselves, we'll show her they ain't no God. We'll go buy them groceries and put on her porch for her. Huh? Guess what? They went and bought the groceries and put on the porch. I reckon that I might be telling it out of context, but the best my memory, the best my mind can remember it. She come out and she began to praise the Lord for the groceries. The two old drunks was hid 
in the bushes or around the side of the house or somewhere and they come out and they said, Lady, God didn't bring them groceries to you. We did. Amen. They, they say the story says that she went on and praised God even harder. Said, God, thank you that you used two old drunks to supply my needs. Honey, can I tell you something? I don't care how. I don't care. Listen, there's been debate over this. Amen. I want to know. I want you to know what the Bible said when they begin to murmur and complain when that water was before them and Pharaoh's army was coming upon their hind, upon their backside, upon their hinds. Hindside. Amen. Moses lifted his rod. Amen. Up over the waters. And the Bible said there was a strong east wind. And it departed the water hither and thither. Amen. And the army, the children of Israel. Amen. They was able to cross over. Amen. Can I tell you something? When God does it, He does it right, honey. Amen. I don't know if you've ever been around after the rain. Amen. But there's mud. But the wind was so strong. Amen. That it made a dry, a dry passage for them. Even the mud was not upon their shoes. Amen. Can I tell you something tonight, church? Quit murmuring. Quit complaining. Only believe. Amen. You think I'm crazy? You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm crazy enough to trust the Lord. I'm crazy enough to put my trust in Him. I watched the video of Jimmy Don preaching the other night. Amen. About the sickness that he came through. Amen. Said uh, They asked him why didn't they give him no medicine and different things and he said they never offered it I didn't have nothing but the Lord can I tell you something church the Lord's all we need hey amen let's let God fight the battle for us I preach you here against medicine no I'm not uh, I'm not against medicine Nary bit I take medicine hey amen can I tell you something when the enemy tries to kill you out. Hello. If it ain't time for you to leave here, you ain't going nowhere. Mm. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. Uh, I forget who it was. I told this story to the Baptist church. Hey man, they looked at me real funny. I believe, I believe it was Gene Parks. If a got shot with an arrow and bled to death, wasn't no blood in his body. And he was still awake and talking to him. Huh? Honey, if it ain't your time to die, you ain't going to die. Huh? Don't let the enemy sweep over your mind with fear. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. John wrote and he told us, he said, fear hath torment. He said, but perfect love casteth out all fear. He said, if you're fearful, it's because you've not yet been made perfect in love. Hello. You ain't going to die till it's your time. Huh? I experienced that in the hospital with my daddy when they did a heart catheterization. Lord, I got tore up, honey. I was crying. I had to walk away from my daddy. And in that recovery room, I walked to the window and I looked out over the city of Kingsport, Tennessee. Because we was there in Holston Valley Medical Center. Johnson City, I was corrected. That's why I keep her around for. Johnson City Medical Center. I looked out over Johnson City. But I just remember looking out that window. And I remember I seen those mountains and those trees and I seen all those houses and those buildings, those structures and I remember what I told the Lord. I said, God, if you can do all this, you can take care of my daddy. Huh? He's got a blockage of 100%. Amen. I don't know if we've still got it on Brooke's phone or not, but the doctor drew... The image of, the, of the, the, the vein that was blocked 100%. And he said, I've never seen nothing like this. He said, you've got an extra vein. He said, God has grew you a vein. And my dad, he's just no country boy like the rest of us. He said, hold on a minute. He said, when you say God, he said, who are you referring to? Because this was a foreign doctor. Huh? This was a foreigner. 
And that Dr. Brooke was standing in the room. He said, you're, you're God. You're God. <laughs> Hey, can I tell you something? I don't know the man's religion. I don't know how he stands. Hey, man, but can I tell you the scripture that come to my mind? Even the devils have to give reverence to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He said, you've got another vein. You, you've got an extra vein. He said, no, no one else has this. He said, and it's a pumping backwards. He said, it's, it, I don't know how to explain it, but God... He said, and it's a feed in the backside of your heart. Oh, God. There was a voice spoke to me and said, Son, I am your creator. Hey man, and can I tell you what the Lord told me? Hey man, listen, it helped me so much. He said, your dad's time is not yet. He said, but when it is, I'll comfort you. Oh, I want you to know, church, that's the best news I could have got. Hey man, when my daddy leaves this old world, yeah, there might be some tears of flowing, honey, but can I tell you, I've got the comforter. I'm going to hold on by the help of God. Hey man, and I'm going to praise my way right on through this. Oh, praise God. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. Hello, somebody. I'm almost done. I will, he said. I will pour out my spirit. That's a promise, church. Huh? The church has got something to look forward to. This pandemic is not the end of it. Do you hear me, church? Hey, man, listen, I know, I know. I've heard different ones say it. Brother Jim said it. Brother Will said it. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. If some, I'm not getting in your politics. Hey, man, I don't care how you vote. don't care how you believe. Hey, man, but I can tell you what the Word of God says. If some was to get in office, we're going to be a communist country. Hey Amen, but that ain't the end of it for the church. Hello? Huh? You know, I've heard people say, well, if so-and-so gets in office, we won't be able to have church anymore. Can I tell you something, church? Hey Amen, Paul, he said, not only am I willing to be bound, but I'm willing to die at Jerusalem for the names, for the Lord's name's sake. Hello? According to history, it tells us that Paul was bound by the guards of Nero and they brought him out of the jail cell and to take him to the chopping block. Hey Amen. And he broke free from the guards. And it wasn't to escape in the natural. But honey, he was ready to escape and get his freedom. Ah, do you hear me, church? Do you hear me? Hey Amen. Lisa Dillman, I think her name's short now. Her sister passed away the other day and she texted or messaged me and she said, Pray for us, brother. We need comfort. Amen. And I told her, I said, Honey, this is what your daddy taught you girls about. A place called heaven. Amen. And I'm not your sister's judge. Amen. But I can comfort you with these words. Amen. Try your best. To make heaven your home. Huh? She said, oh, I believe my sister made it. I said, well, that's even more, even more of a reason to want to go. Hey, man, I didn't tell her this, but I thought about it. If she didn't make it, they won't know it. Because God's going to wipe away all tears of sorrow. Huh? The Bible said, comfort the feeble-minded. Hello. Can I tell you something tonight, church? We're living in a time. There's trouble all around us. We're living in a time. Hey Amen. I want you to know. I heard Brother Jim sing that song the other night. Done my heart so good. There, that might have been the other day. In the sweet by and by. I can't remember if it's Saturday or Sunday. That he sung it. I believe it was Sunday. Hey Amen. But more so than the song was his testimony. Don't you want to go? <laughs> huh? What the man's preached for many years. Hey man, the Bible teaches us precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of His saints. Huh? The Bible teaches us when a saint of God is going on 
to that heavenly reward, the Bible said to rejoice. And when a baby is born into this old wicked world, it said to mourn. But you see, our flesh has got that backwards. Huh? Can I tell you something, church? God is going to make a way. Ah, preacher, that's crazy. Well, if you think that's crazy, you ain't seen nothing yet. Huh? You ain't seen nothing yet. Because I want you to know, if you'll go back and you'll study the three chapters in Joel, hey man, God began to use signs in the heavens and in the earth, hey man, to bring His people back to the heart of repentance. Hello? God is trying to use these signs to bring His people in before it's too late. Your loved ones. How many's got lost loved ones? Oh, God, I do. Uh, I've got precious family that's dear to me, that's lost. Uh, you know what's even more sad than that? Those that served the Lord for years and depart into faith right here at the end. Uh, that's even more sad. Uh, it would be better for them to never had the chance than to have the chance and turn it away. Hello? Uh, we love you tonight. I don't know what you're going through. Some of you shared your problems with me. Amen. By the help of the Lord, I'll not share them with nobody else. Amen. But can I tell you something? It didn't catch God by surprise. The mess that you're in, you'll come out with a message. The test you're in, you'll come out with a testimony. The trial that you're in, you'll come out triumphant. Hello? If you'll just hold on to God. Hold on to that unchanging hand. Hey Amen. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way, but I couldn't help when I heard Jimmy preaching the other day on the uh, internet there, the video that Mitch put on there. He was talking about how sick he was, and all he could do was just cry out to God. Church. When that's all you can do, just cry out to God. Huh? Just cry out to God. Hey Amen. Just cry out to Him. You've done all that you can do. Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus and he said, Having done all to stand, to what? Stand there for. Huh? Church, let's stand. I'll share this with you as they get us a song. A double minded man or woman is unstable in all of his ways. What are you talking about, preacher? One minute they say, oh, I got the faith. I know God's going to bring it, bring me through it. But no, no more than ten, maybe five seconds later, oh, I just don't see how God's going to do it. Huh? Can I tell you something? God ain't if you're double-minded. Huh? You have got to have the faith in the good times and in the bad. Huh? Preacher, you just don't understand. You don't know what it's like to worry. Honey, please. Step over here in the real world where we're at. Uh, Jesus was, a part in the hinder, was asleep in the hinder part of the ship. Uh, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't below deck somewhere. But he was in the back of the boat. He felt the rain hitting him. Uh, the disciples done all that they could do. A man in the boat was a com becoming, became overcame with the waves. And they woke the master and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Huh? One of the gospels said he rebuked his disciples first and then he rebuked the sea. And another one said he rebuked the sea and then he rebuked his disciples. But either way, they both got rebuked. Huh? Jesus said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Can I, can I challenge you to do this right here? Go back through the four Gospels and read about the healings of Jesus. Huh? The woman with the issue of blood, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Huh? The blind man come to him, Lord, 
can you heal us? Do you have faith that I can heal you? Well, Lord, yeah, we do. Huh? Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith, thy faith, thy faith. The Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hello? You've got to have faith tonight, church. Even when all hope is lost and even when the waves are crashing in your vessel and even when it feels like that you're sinking, God, I know that you're going to make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Peter began to sink. Ah, but what did he do? Lord, save me lest I perish. What did the Lord do? He reached down. All God's wanting is for you to cry out to Him. Preacher, you don't understand. I've cried and I've cried. Honey, listen. I'm not talking about crying tears of sorrow. I'm not, cry, I'm not talking about crying and, and, and being upset and worrying. I'm talking about, Lord, I know you're going to make a way. I trust you, God. I still trust you, Lord. Huh? I still trust you, God. I know, Lord, that you're going to make that way. Because you see, as long as Peter had his eyes on the Lord, everything was fine. You hear me? He wasn't looking at the winds and the waves and the thunder and the light. He wasn't looking at those things around. He wasn't looking at the boat that was behind him or the other disciples. His eyes was on Jesus. Everything was fine. But just as soon as he took his eyes off the Lord, he began to sing. Can I tell you this tonight? You sit here tonight and you say, Preacher, you, you don't understand. I feel like I'm going under. Can I tell you this? Whether it makes you mad or not, it's because you've took your eyes off Jesus. Huh? It's because you took your eyes off the Lord. And honey, I've been there. I'm not acting like I'm not. I've been there. I've took my eyes off the Lord before. Hey, Amen. And I've had to cry out to him. Hey Amen. Can I tell you, he's just waiting for you to call out to him. And honey, he'll sweep you up in his arms. And he'll carry you to safety. Hey Amen. God loves you tonight and so do I. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I've tried my best to share with you what the Lord gave me. If you need to pray, the altar's open. No matter what you're going through, cry out to Jesus. Oh, sing the calm sea in Jesus. The disciples were getting concerned. The wind started violently blowing. He was asleep at the start. Does he not care that we perish? We're helpless and we're so afraid. Jesus arose when they called him. Said to them, where is your faith? Cause you prayed all night. You've held on with all of your mind. Child, your cries have awoken the master. Have awoken the master. It hit you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance, you're frightened with nowhere to run. But now your vessel is filling. You're thinking. Surely drown. You cried out for help from the Savior. You know you can't give up now. Cause you prayed all night. You've held on with all of your might. Child, your cries have awoken the master. Oh, he Child, your cries 
have awoken the master. Oh, it hits you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance, you're frightened with nowhere to run. Now your vessel is filling. You're thinking that you'll surely drown. You cried out for help from the Savior, and you know you can't give up now, cause you prayed all night. You've held on with all of your mind, child, your cries have awoken the Master. Oh, he knows your voice. Lift your hands, it's time to rejoice. Child, your cries have awoken the master.